the Pilgrim's Progress mm-hmm. and um, that part where they get stuck in the mud. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's Hmm. what american christianity is setting us up for right now yes is oh come with us like come it's gonna the streets are gonna be paved with gold it's gonna be amazing yeah. it's gonna be beautiful you're gonna get a crown mm-hmm. and all these things and then the, like people were like okay yeah i'll start yeah. i'll start this faith yeah. walk and then they they get in the mud and it's not what they expected. And then <sighs> this is what turns people away from the faith mm-hmm. because they were setting them up for Failure. Failure. Yeah, literally. Like, and I think that's where we are. Yeah, it's like, um, one is, I think this idea of an easy life is very American. Mm -hmm. Because I think when you go outside of America and you go into certain nations, you, you realize that that's just not even possible in some places for life to be easy. Mm -hmm. So to even claim or make the claim that life with Jesus should look like this. Mm. If it cannot apply to a single mother in in Rwanda, then it should not be preached. Like cuz it's it's actually not a general mm. transcendent truth. Mm. It's a very culturally specific truth. Mm. Um but I think I think until we learn or have some type of theological awareness of the beauty and worthwhile nature of suffering, we're eh, we're just gonna have a hard time. Mm. And by hard, I don't even mean like we gonna be out here, you know, worshiping Satan. <clears throat> I just mean we're not gonna see God. We're not gonna that see that part. Because if you got people like Paul over here having the audacity to say, like, I want to know Christ and the fellowship of His sufferings. So you're telling me, I, I know Him in the book. I know him through his people Mm -hmm. and I know him by finding him when life is difficult. Right. So you shortcut your ability to have a more comprehensive knowledge of Jesus when you don't allow him to show you himself when life is hard. Yeah. Shout out to CR for finding that clip for us. Um, What do you think about what she said? Jackie just different, man. (laughs) (laughs) No, seriously, like the more and more I hear Jackie and and just how she breaks down and how she teaches, she just different. I'm just be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't hear many speak like her, just being honest. So like I'm not surprised it's Jackie Hill Perry. This yeah. is this is what you get when you yeah. you have her answer a question. I'm just being honest. Yeah. <laughs> she never lets down. But yeah, she's definitely different. She definitely opened my eyes because I never even thought about that, the whole generalization of when you're preaching the gospel. Are you really preaching the gospel to everybody mm-hmm. or just your specific culture? Mm-hmm. That I think that's like the first time I really heard that even being said in real time. So mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I learned. The truth is something that you should be able to take anywhere at any time and it still remain the truth. And um I think a lot of us are not being taught that in America um, for the reasons we talked about earlier. You know, churches are going to give you a certain message at certain times because they have a certain agenda. Um, they're trying to get a building. They're trying to get certain funds populated for certain things. Like, it's not really as much attention really focused on wholesome discipleship and learning the Bible in context and how to apply it to your life. And the truth of Scripture you really think about it, it's not as appealing as that stuff they're talking about. If I tell you, like, yeah, you're going to come to Christ, but you're still going to struggle. You're going to come to Christ, but you're mm-hmm. still going to be depressed sometimes. You're still going to be frustrated. You're still going to be angry. Your natural mind is like, why would I still want to come to Christ then? But the whole thing is we're not trying to help you escape the difficulties of life. Now you have somebody walking through those difficulties with you instead of you trying to figure out where my life is going or why this happened to me or did life just deal me a bad hand. Nah, you're going through things. And I think, like you look in scripture, people say, well, every time something good happens, something bad happens. If you look in scripture, after the Israelites went through the Red Sea, where Mm -hmm. did they go next? Mm -hmm. They went to the wilderness. After Jesus got baptized by John the Baptist, where did he go? To be tempted and tried by the the devil. He went to the wilderness. It's like, (laughs) Those things happen, but those things are not there to just say, hey, life is just bad. God uses all those things to humble us, to mold us, to shape us, and to correct us. But if you don't understand true biblical Christianity, you're just thinking like, man, I didn't sign up for this. I thought my life was going to be perfect. You don't understand those wilderness seasons and those valley seasons and the purpose of that. And a lot of people don't. That's why people are leaving the faith. And well, if you leave the faith, you never were in it. But people are walking away or people are frustrated or confused by God because they're not taught the truth on the front end because it's not appealing. That's not the truth that's going to make you want to come and give all the money out your pocket. That's not the truth that's going to make you have yeah. so many people in your church where it's just like, oh, man, we at the door. We was packed today because we told folks you're going to be depressed. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's just not going to happen. So VC said uh, 2 Timothy 3.12. Uh, yes, 
and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ will suffer persecution. So she asked, um, uh, why do we never learn about certain books of the Bible in church? We stay in the same books all the time. The same topics are preached. What do you think? Mm. That, that goes back to the theology of the pastor of the, of the church uh -huh. yeah. uh, a, a lot of times. And, and what they, because you have some pastors that only preach from the Old Testament, but then you have some that only teach from the New Testament, you know, so that's the, the theological stance that they're taking. Um, but one thing that I was uh, asking, um, back to um, playing James's point is, um, there is, has anybody ever seen a scripture in the Bible that says that the, that the Christian's not going to go through something? No. No. So so there it is. I mean, you have examples of people in the Bible. The lady with the issue of blood went through that for 12 years. Mm -hmm. You know, so we all going to go through something. Um, I found out two years ago that I had prostate cancer. Wow. Right? And so going through that, uh, I, people ask me, well, did you feel any kind of pain or whatever? I, I felt no pain or anything. Mm. All right, so I had to. So God saved me through that. So you know, it's a blessing. That I've been I've been healed, yeah. and uh, one of the things I, I try to do is I talk, try to talk to all men because a lot of us men don't want to go to absolutely uh, right. you know get checks and all that type of stuff and everything. Get your prostate check, brothers. I mean, if you haven't, please make sure you get your mm -hmm. prostate check, right? Mm -hmm. um, but but I had no idea that I was going to go through that, yeah. you know. And then I ended up having the surgery called brachytherapy surgery. Went through that and had thirty five radiation tra treatments, wow. and and so I've I've been through that and you know been been saved and healed and everything like that but we're all going to go through something yeah mm -hmm. something and if we don't think that we're going to go through something then we're not re we're not actually reading it and applying the word the way it's supposed to be applied you know and breaking it down to to really say for it to say you know w what does it speak to us that we're all going to go through yeah trials and tribulations yeah after Cherie said that's why uh bible uh accurate discipleship is so important yeah you don't you don't get to hear stories like that without having somebody to disciple you through it because you'll you'll think it's going to be a certain way but you need somebody to say hold on yes you're gonna have problems in your marriage you're gonna have problems with your friends you're gonna have problems all kinds of ways and a lot with of your, your problems a lot of your problems are going to be because you're a christian too yeah, facts. not just normal yeah. life problems yeah. you claiming the name of jesus is going to invite problems to your life and, and people don't understand the word persecution you know christian persecution is going against the church yeah that's what that is that's that's persecution against the church yeah. anything else that we're going through is daily situations that we have no control over yeah so yeah. it's not persecution it's just what we're going to go through as christians yeah. it's yeah. sad too man because um that's why i think christ is so hard on like the false preacher because you got people who are literally going through things out here and they're desperate you know they're coming to God looking for answers. They're looking for change in their life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're really looking for the truth for real. I right. think that's when they're really the spot where they're really most, most open to the truth. And instead of really just giving them like, hey, I can't promise you every day is going to be great, but I can't promise you from this day forth, you won't have to go through what you're going through alone. Right. Not only will you have God, most importantly, you have, um, that's the, for, the foremost thing. You also have a body of believers here holding you accountable, walking through you. you somebody showed that you can cry on and talk to. You don't have to feel alone. But what they do is, they see that vulnerability as a way for them to come up. And that's right. why God is so, that's why Jesus don't really play around with these false teachers. He goes so hard at them. Like mm -hmm. when he was going at the Pharisees, like, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? They'll talk to him and he in the field mm -hmm. eating grain. Mm -hmm. He didn't just go home. He pull up to the temple like, mm -hmm. yeah, furthermore, let me right. tell you this. <laughs> right, right. Let's yeah. say of this. You right. know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. And really go in on them because mm -hmm. like, y'all really making folks feel like yeah. they in bondage out here. Yeah. Yeah. And shout out to Crispy. It's true. People disagreeing with you is not persecution. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. people are just going to disagree with you. doesn't mean they're haters. Right. It doesn't mean any of that stuff. That's not included in the persecution part. Some of that is, uh, uh, you know, correction. Mm -hmm. Some of that right. is wisdom that's coming mm -hmm. at you. It's not all hate. It's not all persecution. Right. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, so let's see. We got a poll that's up. And again, man, I, I said this a little while ago, but now shout out to the 219 people watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it keeps Appreciate going you guys up. guys being here. Make sure you subscribe and like and all the stuff, man. We'd love to have you back. Um the poll says, have you or someone you've known personally left the faith? Wow. Um, 7% I have uh, currently at one point. 29% um, said I've known a family who has or 38% said I've known a friend who has. 27% said no. It's an interesting way to say it because I, mm -hmm. I don't know what you prescribe to, but leaving the faith is interesting. Is that possible? No. So I'm with you. Is that possible? I think mm. I think sometimes, and this is this is where um, we really gotta be careful. You may yeah. have grown up in church. <clears throat> you may have um, you know been in church all your life. You may call yourself a Christian, but the way I believe the Bible describes this is: you may have had a form of godliness, 
but you were never really saved. Because mm-hmm. I believe when God says, I will never never let you go, I'll never let you out of my hand, mm-hmm. that applies to, to, to Christians, right? So yeah. if you find yourself out of his hand, I believe you may never have been in his hand. So mm-hmm. that's a warning to everybody who's out here calling themselves a Christian is whether you look at it as losing your salvation or never having your salvation doesn't matter. The point is make sure you are who you say you are. At every moment of the day, don't take for granted just because my mama prayed for me or whatever. Make sure you actually believe this and you've actually accepted Jesus Christ into your heart. Right. Um, not just because somebody called you up to the front of the congregation and put their hands on you. That does not make you a Christian. You have to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus is who he says he is, that he died for you, mm-hmm. rose again. That has to be true to you in your heart. And a lot of people, I don't know if it's true yet. It's not true. You haven't given your life over to him yet. Right. There has to be Savior and Lord. And the Lord part, I think a lot of people have struggled with. People being tricked, <laughs> like the Bible says, only God knows the heart of man. You know, so yeah. we see a lot of performance that, that mimics Christianity. Like you saw Judas. Judas was out there doing everything the disciples were doing. They were walking two by two. Yeah. He was out there ministering. He would, but at the end of the day, you saw he really wasn't legit. Yeah. Um, and just for a scriptural reference, uh, 1 John two nineteen. It says, in the end time, many will depart from the faith, but those who depart were never with us in the first place. Wow. Um, yeah. To say that sure. you can lose your salvation, this is my stance. To say you can lose your salvation is to say the blood of Christ is not strong enough. It's not enough. strong enough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if it's not strong enough to keep me the first time, why would I want to keep going back, getting saved over again? It's people who go into events. And I've seen it. They're yeah. getting saved. Every time. Every time. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Over like. That's that's not Christ. I don't I don't think yeah. the God that we serve, His blood it doesn't have enough power to hold you and keep you. Yeah. Um. I think, like I said, only God knows the heart. Sometimes a struggling believer can look like an unbeliever mm-hmm. to the point where you yeah. think he's yeah. just mm-hmm. lost their salvation, but he yeah. may be going through a difficult. He or she may be going through a difficult season. Yeah. yeah. Um. It's really hard to gauge that. But once your heart has truly been given to the Lord, like and transformed, and you really receive salvation. Yeah. I don't believe that you can lose that. <clears throat> um, yeah. Okay. God's not gonna renege I think on something. He said he'll leave the 99 To get, get the, the one So no matter how far you feel like you've gone He will get you back And he'll he'll use you know, calamity He'll use blessing He'll use whatever it'll take To get you off of that cliff And get you back with the flock mm-hmm. So I, I think there's assurance in that But if you find yourself Outside of his will consistently It could be that you never were in his Mm, will. So you have to check your heart. So when um, I I went to seminary and got my master's degree in in theology, one of the things that one of the professors told me when I was getting ready to apply for school, she said 20 to 25 percent of those who enter seminary end up leaving the faith. Mm. Wow. I've heard that. I've heard that. So even on a higher level, yeah, because you get challenged so much yeah. in theology school about you know this different religions, uh, you know w- what you're really feeling, what you what you, what you really understanding, and so to know that twenty to twenty five percent of people mm-hmm. will leave the faith wow. because they're entering seminary, and then also are they entering for the right reason, right? Are they entering because this is a business mm-hmm. and they see it that way? Mm-hmm. Are mm-hmm. they entering because they want a deeper relationship with Christ? And I want yeah. to know yeah. how to understand that. Yeah. yeah. 